Well, thank you all for being here, first of all. What a, what a great day for Florida State University. Uh, I want to introduce one other person who's, uh, well, I think we'll be talking at the reception. That's Doug Russell, who's the chairman of our Seminole Boosters. And uh, Doug, thank you for great support that you give uh, Florida State University Athletics. Uh, and probably many of you know, we, we recently signed an agreement, uh, a mem memorandum of understanding with, uh, between athletics and boosters that will, I believe, enhance uh, all of our athletic uh, teams in the future. And uh, Doug was a, an integral, integral part of that, and uh, I appreciate it. I just want everybody to know that. But I'm here uh, for some really good news. Uh, it's obviously a secret, uh, I guess. Uh, so good afternoon to everybody. And, and first thing I want to do, and I know he's not here, but I wanted to offer my congratulations to Coach Mike Martin Sr. on an incredible career. He uh, has represented Florida State University with grace and dignity as the head baseball coach for 40 years. I could not be happier, could not be happier that he and Carol will begin the next chapter of their lives, and I know he's happy about that. Had a nice conversation with him at lunch today, and. Uh, uh, Looking forward to obviously playing some golf with him in the near future. Uh, both he and I both need to play a little bit more, I think. I know I do. So we're here today to, to officially welcome Mike Martin, Coach Mike Martin Jr. as Florida State's new baseball coach. We're fortunate to have uh, a lot of quality choices. We had a lot of quality choices for this is a very, very important position, but I think we have, I know we have the right person at the right time for this post. His record at Florida State University for the last 22 years reflects his ability to recruit and coach at the highest level of college baseball. Equally important, equally important is his understanding of the culture of this university the values we hold, the expect expectations we have and for our student athletes as well as for this university. I'm confident, I'm very confident that he will continue the high level of excellence in our program. And I want him to know that David Coburn and I are going to be behind you, Coach, 100%. Anything you need, within reason. <laughs> <laughs> That would be David within reason. I will say anything you need, but no. <laughs> seriously, we're here to support you. We want you to be successful. We want our student athletes to be successful. And I know you'll do that for this program. So I, I really didn't have a lot more to say other than I am very, very pleased. I couldn't be happier when we met Friday morning uh, with, uh, or was it Friday morning, David, or Friday morning, with Coach, uh, with Coach Martin. I could not have been more pleased with the responses that we received from, from Coach Martin about his, his attitude toward the program, his incredible uh, work ethic that he brings to this program, and the many, many other assets that he has over 22 years of experience at Florida State University. So I'm delighted and uh, delighted to turn it over to uh, David Coburn for some comments before we introduce Coach. Again, thank you all for coming. I appreciate it very much. Um, I think <clears throat> most of my close friends would tell you, uh, and certainly I think my wife Mary, who is here, would tell you that uh, going into this process in the fall, I was a bit of a skeptic about Coach. Um, so I spent a lot of time studying this team during the season, and in particular studying him. And then, as you know, I managed to spend the last three and a half weeks with this team in Athens and Baton Rouge and Omaha. And uh, I had the opportunity to observe him interacting with the players, interacting with the boosters and the fans, and interacting with the press. And I had the opportunity to observe his work ethic and his attention to detail. And to be honest with you, I came away very impressed. And then uh, the president and I interviewed him, and we talked about a lot of things. We talked about recruiting. We talked about scheduling. We talked about staffing. 
We talked about culture. We talked about fundraising and interaction with boosters and fans. We talked about overall fit. And frankly, he blew the doors off. He was totally and completely prepared. He answered every question we had. And uh, for me, at least, uh, that clinched it. So I am very, very happy to be here today to introduce the next head baseball coach at Florida State University, Mike Martin, Jr. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. I haven't won a ball game, haven't lost one either, but I do appreciate everybody being here. Uh, first, and uh, state the obvious, it's an honor to stand before you as the next head coach here at Florida State. This place is special. It's the only place I've ever wanted to be, and I can promise you, no staff will work harder or smarter to keep this program moving forward, moving upward as well. We can and we will. A lot of people to thank, so bear with me. First, President Thrasher. Uh, for entrusting me with this program. I'm greatly appreciative, and I won't let you down. Our athletic director, David Coburn, for the leadership. Boy, did we need it at that time, and he's filled in incredibly. And I appreciate the opportunity, and I promise I'll make you proud. Mom and Dad, I could go on about the baseball and all the stuff that has been passed down, if you will, but what I appreciate most about both of them is the way they went about you know, how, this is how you do things. My sisters and I, uh, it's what I cherish the most. Of course, their relationship is amazing, and you know, it's like they've always said, it's not hard to be nice. And we, uh, us kids, we really appreciate it. Boy, they sure drew it up. That's how you do it. Uh, they're not here today. Mom said that um, she, all she would do was cry and interrupt everything, and <laughs> Levin said, well, I guess I can call him Dad now. <laughs> Dad said, well, it's, uh, I've heard you talk enough over the years, so I don't need to be there. I want to thank my boys, Tyler and TJ. Um, first of all, thanks for getting so dressed up. Uh, <laughs> it happens all the time, you know, your dad gets a promotion, but anyhow. <laughs> I, uh, I do want to thank them, because it's not easy. I'm not around a lot. Um, you know, they, they understand, they get it. And uh, although the hours won't change, um, I promise I'll quit complaining so much about y'all spending habits. <laughs> I said as much, so don't get sassy. <laughs> Former coaches, I've had a lot. Um, very basketball, baseball, and there's people that have touched my life. From Adolph Hicks at Cobb Middle School, I was our basketball coach, who was the first one to really believe in me. I was extremely skinny, not very athletic. Um, but he always made us break that huddle with be something. And I took that to heart. I think everybody on those teams that we had there are successful because he instilled that in us, be something. Tim Ashcroft, my high school baseball coach. Um, boy, I sure didn't appreciate the discipline back then. Uh, he was a military man, but I sure appreciate it now. I'm forever indebted to him. He's a special man. Former players. Current players, some of them are here today. I appreciate you being here. Uh, I've gotten a, an awful lot of very kind uh, text messages, very thoughtful and heartfelt, and I appreciate all of them. I want to thank Katie Webb. Um, she's very dear to me, um, helped me through a very painful and difficult time in my life. Uh, cherish our friendship. I got to give a shout out to the Jungle. The Jungle is a group of coaches we've Always on the road together, always watching baseball games. Um, there's probably eight of us in it. The reason we call it the jungle is you never really know what you're going to hear and what you're going to see. But um, we bounce ideas off each other, uh, we motivate each other, uh, and we sweat an awful lot together. And um, I'm, I'm really appreciative to them. I spoke with all of them today. They're great guys. I am Mike Martin, Jr. I am not Mike Martin, Sr. There will never be another Mike Martin Sr. Nobody will do it as long or as well as he did. Uh, we're going to go at it hard. We're going to do things the right way. The core principles of this program and this university will stay the same. I mean, we're going to treat people the right way. We're going to work hard. We're not going to berate guys, you know, language and stuff along those lines. We're going to do it right. 
We want the whole person. We want them right mentally, physically, spiritually, socially. We'll go to the ends of the earth to make sure they have every opportunity to be right. But there will be things that will be done differently um, from the recruiting. I want to recruit faster. I want to recruit earlier. Um, I'm going to be out on the road. I want all three. When I hire my staff, they will be out as well. Everybody in this organization will know exactly what I want said when it comes to giving tours and showing kids around uh, this great athletic department. Um, I will have my hand in that. So the old saying, act like a head coach, but work like an assistant. That's the way it's going to be. I'm going to change other things. I think the animals will be happy. I want to move back over to the third base dugout. I want the animals to be able to see us. Um, I think it's, it's important. Uh, that dugout is bigger. It's a lot roomier. <laughs> it just looks right. I was over there, basically grew up on that side, and it's no big deal for our guys to walk down the hall. I'm taking the, no, uh, the uh, names off the back of the jerseys. I don't, it doesn't matter. I want guys to understand that, you know, make them know who you are. Make them know who you're, what your last name is. I don't want another pitch taken in the inner, inner third of the plate. Inner third of the, you divide up a home plate into thirds. If it's a left-handed hitter, here's the inner third, here's the middle third, here's the outer third. I don't want another one taken, a fastball, in the middle part of the plate ever again in this program. Right, wrong, or indifferent, I got to find out. Sure, you know, I've got an awful lot of Martin in me, but I also have some Dellinger in me. And by the way, the Dellingers are frugal. Um, <laughs> Martins, Martins tend to spin. I, I really appreciate that. So, yeah, <laughs> figured you would. <clears throat> Let me just open it up for questions. I don't want to sit up here and ramble. I'm, everybody that knows me, I'm not much of a talker. Um, let's just go ahead and open it up for questions. Perfect. Nobody? Corey, we're out here. Corey, start us off. So um, I talked to you maybe six weeks ago. Mm -hmm. and, uh, you didn't know. You didn't know if you were going to. When did you feel confident that you did get the job? Was it late as a few days ago? When the president stood up and offered me the job. You know, I've always been, um, I don't know, I work out of fear. <laughs> you know, I'm not a, um, I'm a pessimist. Um, that's another Dellinger trait. Um, but that's just, that's just me. You know, I've never taken anything for granted. Um, you know, I've never been given anything. You know, I want this team, my teams, to take on my personality. And that's one of which, you know, I was always told I was only just on the team because of my dad. You know, I caught my first game in Division One at 150 pounds. I wanted to play with a little edge. Um, we're going to obviously bring enthusiasm, but um, a little bit of, a little, little more, a little extra. I answered the question, sorry, yeah. Gordon. All right. <laughs> Anything else? Yeah. <laughs> uh, when you, um, I guess, trying to sleep that night, or what were the emotions after you found out in the next 24 hours? Uh, I was on the phone. You know, I've literally had a phone glued to my side of my head for whatever, three days. Um, again, things happen quick in recruiting and, you know, the kids that have been waiting, thank goodness. I do want to thank them for waiting. Some of them, you know, bought in and said, you know, I love this place. I think he's the guy. I'm not going to bet against him and committed or, or waited. I want to thank them as well because there's a lot of them. And we'll, we'll start having a pretty good deluge here shortly, kids committing. Ebb and flow that goes on in this sport, yeah. and yeah. do you expect much of a change in the roster? Yeah, with small scholarships, uh, playing time, uh, unforeseen, you know, someone gets sick, a divorce, uh, whatever, a lot of, there's always going to be attrition. And, um, you know, we want our guys happy, and I get it, you know. If you're not happy, I don't want you to be around here and be miserable. Go chase your dream, and we'll support it. Was there ever any anxiety on your part that, that staying here was going to be the best way for you to eventually get the head coaching job? Did you ever feel that maybe you had to leave maybe at some point? Or did you always have confidence yeah, I, in staying here? Was I was never, again, I've interviewed and I've been told a lot, hey, you're our guy. Guess what? Sorry, we can't hire you. This guy, we're not going to be a stepping stone job. You know, one of the trustees or whomever else, you know, rejected it. And I've had it happen quite a few times. I wasn't afraid to leave. Um, and then, you know, I got divorced, and I ain't leaving my boys. Have you talked to your dad about what, where's he going to watch games 
<laughs> Hopefully not an earshot from me. <laughs> um, we need to mandate a closed window up in the offices. Oh, thank you, David. I'd appreciate that. No, um, I mean, he's, he's, you know how he is. Um, he'll stay out of the way, um, but he can't help it. I'm, I'm sure I'm going to get some texts or phone calls or what have you, but I just want him to, you know, mom, go, it's mom's turn. What was his reaction when you called him that you got the job? Well, I, I couldn't hear. She, he put me on speaker, and I couldn't hear him over mom, you know, <laughs> yelling and whooping it up. You know, her little woo, woo, woo. That's when she cheers, she was, she had that going. They were excited. You know. Is there a PG-13 version of, of the way you got the nickname, me? You can oh, sure, one? yeah. Um, I've always, I mean, I literally... In middle school, I think in elementary school. That's all I've been called since I've been four years old. Um, I've always been skinny, needed meat on my bones. Uh, it was also a way when we were in the backyard and the old man was throwing to me and, you know, that derogatory, you can't hit me meat, you know, and it, you combine the two and literally that's all anybody's ever called me. I used to write meat on my papers in middle school, <laughs> high school too. Are we to still call you meat? Or, or oh, yeah, sure. I won't turn around unless you do. <laughs> uh, Coach, most people thought it was a foregone conclusion that you would get the job, but just during that interview process, how much did you feel like you had to prove uh, to these two guys that you were the right candidate? Well, there was, there was questions, some tough questions. Um, you know, this world and societies, I don't want to get on a soapbox, but there was a lot of questions about a lot of things, things that have been said about me that are found out not true. Um, you know, they wanted to know who would, I was thinking I was going to hire, what type of guy was I wanting to hire, you know, my managing style. Um, you know, there was, there was tough questions, um, but again, they were right in doing their due diligence, sure. Do you have an idea of who you want to fill out your, your staff? Have you made any offers? No, I haven't. Um, you know, and I'm not able to, to comment on that, but um, you know, I'm going to interview a lot of guys um, planning tomorrow. I'm going to zigzag around and uh, some via phone, but I want to know a lot about um, their personality, their beliefs, you know, a lot of things that go into it. When you take a look at assistants, what, what's the biggest philosophical thing you want the guys on your staff? Well, energy, one. Um, that's first and foremost. I want positive people around. Um, you know, I, I'm uh, Big on camaraderie and teamwork, and um, you know, guys that you know, we call it feel. You know, say the right things and at the right times. Uh, I'm not into a you know a guy that's going to berate players that type of the old Bobby Knight style of coaching. I'm not into that. Um, but you know, offensively and pitching, there's I don't want to bore you with all that, but there's a lot that you know that goes into it. But personality is is big. I do. I want to find one, yes. Um, I think it's important. I need to broaden, we need to broaden the net. Um, and then anytime you can do that, widen, broaden, whatever you want to call it, it's important. And uh, if I can find the right guy that knows how to coach and has the right personality and is respected in that community, um, I will try to, try to get him because it's, um, it's important. You know, when they're out watching guys and there's more sets of eyes to, you know, hey, this freshman down here in wherever, Palm Beach is really, really good. Um, you know, we want to be one of the first calls. When you talk about being aggressive, I guess talking about being more aggressive at the plate, is that, and you've been the hitting instructor. Can you talk about the dynamic of being the hitting instructor but not being the head coach? And being well, he's an offensive guy as well, you know, so, but I'm an assistant. You know, assistants make suggestions. Um, so there's a, there's a lot of things that, you know, again, I'm not going to roll the guy for crying out loud, but there's things that we, there's things that we, you know, differ on. And, um, but again, I, I stay in my lane, if you will. We've had some doozies, I can promise you. I think the funniest is Tyler Holt. We got into it. First of all, my locker was on one end, his locker was on the other. It used to be there was two lockers in front of us. Well, more in the middle is makes for a more peaceful environment and we got into it and he left or whatever and Tyler Holt looks at me and he says is it always like this I said yeah get ready that was just an average one so <laughs> all part of it all in the name of winning 
there's the one thing that, that eluded your father, and I know mm -hmm. that's, is that the, the single focus for you, or are you more of a process-focused, oriented coach? No, I mean, I get it. Um, yes, everything is going to be geared towards, you know, that, the mental health side that I want to, you know, I want to put them in more pressure situations via music, via their teammates getting on to them, trying to rattle them. I'm, I'm really into the, the mental side um, of, you know, competitive athletes, and I think that's, Something that we can do a better job at as well, as far as the, the changes that we're going to make. I'm going to mandate, you know, regular visits with um, psychiatrists and mental health people because these kids come in with an awful lot, and uh, you got to get get that out. Dare I say clutter? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It was a joke. <laughs> Kids don't know, you know, care to know what you know until they know that you care. And that was one thing that he was really, really, really good at. Those guys would go through, run through a wall for him and genuinely loved him. He got them to play hard. Um, I think that's, you know, again, the way you treat, you know, young men and take opportunities to, you know, life, life's lessons. Uh, they respect that, um, you know, and he was incredibly driven. He brought it every single day. You knew what you were going to get every day. There was no, you know, one day up, one day down. He was the uh, consistent personality, and um, and I think that's the main, the main thing. I uh, you mentioned it that you know you're Mike Martin Senior, not or Mike Martin Junior, not Mike Martin Senior, but just. That's something you'll have to deal with a lot. I mean, people asking, you know, comparing you to your dad. How do you combat that, and what, what will you do kind of moving forward, saying that this is my team, this is the way I'm going to do things? Uh, winning, for one. <laughs> um, you know, and, and just being, you know, myself. I'm not, I'm not trying to be anybody else. Anybody that's spent enough time with me knows I'm kind of, you know, I am who I am, set in my ways. I'm not going to deviate. Um, you know, I think that's important. Um, I think... Um, Again, the core principles, the foundation of the, of the program is not going to change. And that's, you know, the biggest gift that he's, you know, taught me and given to me when it comes to uh, this program. So just, you know, plugging away, doing my thing, and, um, you know, we'll get the right guys in here. That'll help, too. When uh, Mr. Coburn mentioned being a little bit skeptical and wanting to know more about you, did that, um, how did you, how did you approach that? I mean, you've been here 20-something years. I, well, I never, you know, I never sensed that. Um, you know, he's always been very professional and first class. Um, you know, I don't blame him. I'm, you know, I would be too. Is it, is it him, you know, helping, or is it just the boss, you know, doing his thing? Um, but, you know, again, we minus that middle part. Um, you know, we we did all right, and um, you know, I think that's important. I mean, that he saw the run that we were on and you know, got to spend time. We got to know each other a little bit better and we're very similar, kind of straight to the point. We know what we want and um, that's it. You mentioned that your phone has been ringing nonstop since the news broke. Uh, mm -hmm. What's some of the comments that colleagues from throughout the nation have been saying to you? Uh, just, you know, you're deserving. Um, great job. That's, that's what you do is you, you put in your time, you work your way up. Um, you know, I was a volunteer for six years. Uh, I never got paid, and then um, you know, moved into this role, and um, just you know, very gracious, kind. You know, some of them I've helped out along the way, and they hadn't forgotten that. But um, it's been, you know, it's been a whirlwind to say the least. A lot of a lot of folks reached out, and I'm very thankful for it. I'm, some people I haven't still haven't gotten back to, but I'm working on it. 700 and something of them. It's been difficult. Jobs in the past that maybe you wanted ended up not happening because some people thought that this day might be an inevitability. But now that it's yeah. finally here, the last 48 hours, what's it been like? Yeah, and it's been a long time. I mean, he's 75. So for the last eight years, everybody thinks he's going to be retiring at any moment. And um, so, I mean, it's, I, I feel like I'm, I don't feel, I know I'm ready for this. Um, I'm excited about it. Uh, we're going to hit the ground running. We're going to do things the right way. Um, it's just, uh, I'm relieved. I am. Um, anytime you're, you know, able to, to provide and be where you want to be, that's, that's pretty dang good. 
Okay, have any update on the contract? Have you met with the team yet as the head coach? No, everybody. They everybody left. You know, when we get we flew back in and you know, some of the guys are in summer school. I met with all the guys that are uh, the recruiting class and some of the guys that stayed back from the current team for rehab or summer school purposes. I've spoken with them. But via text, just about everybody, yes. How did you approach recruiting here in the last three weeks? Was it was it hang hang on for me? Just or? yeah. I mean we've been at a standstill for you know, a while now. Um, everybody's waiting to see what was going to happen. Do you have a timetable for when the staff, I know as soon as possible, but when you have the whole staff together, do you at the end of July, the end of June? No, it would, it would be well before that. We're in prime recruiting time right now. And um, just as while I'm finding out who I want, and I want them, you know, getting applying, I'm not sure how long it's got to stay open and all that, but it'll be ready when, as soon as it, you know, closes and we can make a decision. It'll happen right then and there. Well, there's a, there's a lot. With small scholarships, we have to get creative. Um, you know, the, the chartered airplanes, being able to get them back and get them in bed and so they can go to that 8 o'clock class on Monday morning is really important. Um, being able to uh, play, I don't want to say keep away, but that's kind of what you do with the pro people. Those kids get drafted. Well, we bring them in for summer school. We have to pay for that. Um, you know, the meals that we're able to provide, NCAA allows us to provide for, um, we got to have money for that. And, um, and it takes a lot, you know, to, to have money in the, to pay for all that stuff. And, and we got to be able to maximize and we can't lose ground. You know, little things that we need to keep the program moving forward, something breaks, and boom, let's, let's you know, rock and roll. So when we have it, it's good. So feel free to donate, anybody. <laughs> Thanks again, y'all. Go Knowles.